Hi guys, so today we're gonna solve two problems. We're gonna first solve a warm-up problem called Fibonacci. We're gonna do, do both iteration and recursion, then we're gonna do work sort. I do recommend though for you guys to work on other problems if you really want, uh, want to understand recursion. This is a very tricky pro uh, concept to understand in programming. I don't think these three problems are enough, and I actually think there is a big jump from Fibonacci to understand merge sort. I recommend a website called CodingBat. They have a Java section with some very good recursion problems. If you're not familiar with Java, you can try other languages or you can find some other problems in JavaScript, but I'd say do at least 10 more. If your goal is to really understand recursion, I don't think to become an engineer, 99% of cases, you wouldn't need to know this. But if you want to know for knowledge, then practice for with more exercises. So without further ado, let's start with Fibonacci. Fibonacci is this sequence of numbers that happens over and over again in nature. The formula looks like this, so I think it's easier to understand by actually looking at the sequence. So what we do is add the previous two numbers and this will become my current number. So what is F2? F2 is the sum of F0 and F1. What is F3? The sum of F1 and F2. What is F4? The sum of F2 and F3. The formula is this, Fn is equal to Fn minus one plus Fn minus two. And right here we can see the base case. The base case is the simplest case that will help us build the remaining of the solution. When f0 is 0, we it's 0, and when f1 is 1, it's 1. As most, uh, as most recursion problems go, it's always a good idea to start with the base cases. So we'll start with an iteration, iter iterative solution. So let's start with this. We're going to be given a number. So let me just double check. So he does, takes a number and returns an array. Yeah, so n will be how many numbers from the Fibonacci sequence we want. If we are gonna do this iteratively, so even so we still would be a good idea to start with the base case in our array. So our base case will be the first two elements of the sequence, which are zero and one. Always start with the base case. Now for the remaining, it's very easy. You just sum the previous two from the array and add it and push it to the array. So we start with from index two because zero and one have already been inserted in the array and we go up to n and we sum and we increment i. Then what we do is to my current number, we basically apply that formula that we just saw on Wikipedia, this one, but in coding. Our current number, which is i, will be equals to the previous number, which is fibr i minus one, plus the number two indexes behind it. So i minus two. And we push it, we push, uh, let me see. No, not push. We return this. So fib array. Let's actually test this. So I'm going to console.log fibs8. And we get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah. So we get the Fibonacci sequence for the first eight numbers. And all it's doing again is summing the previous one. Now that we solve iteratively, we're going to solve it recursively. So what is the base case? The base case is when when n equals zero or n equals one. So if n equals zero or n equals one, we can do less or equal. We're gonna return n. Why? Because if it's zero, as we saw, it returns zero. If it's one, it returns one, which is equivalent to n. So we can just return n. Now, if it's not, then we return. We're gonna return, fips is not a function, pa, pa, 21. This is the sum of all the, the, the numbers. So this is an interesting one. It's not exactly what he asked, but if we put, for example, eight, it's gonna add the first eight elements. So it's gonna add from zero to 21. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at merge sort. I think the best way to understand merge sort is really through a picture. So merge sort is a recursive way of sorting an array. And the way we're gonna do this is to first split the array in half multiple times until we get individual numbers. So you see that at first we have three, four, five, six, we have seven elements. We split in half. In this case, it's an odd number, but it's okay. We get four on the left, three on the right. Then we split in half again. Then we split in half. Once we reach only one number per array, that's our base case. That's when we stop and we return. And that's where the sorting happens. When we return 38 and when we turn, return 27, we're gonna compare both and then put them in a, an array. So we're gonna sort uh, 38 and 27, and then we get 27, 38. Same thing here, we're gonna compare 43 and three. We're gonna uh, sort them, so on and so forth. 
when we get to these two arrays, we're going to do the same thing. So the way we're going to merge is basically com compare the first elements to each other. So which one is smaller? 3 or 27? 3. So we put it in the first spot. Then we move to 43. Which one is smaller? 43 or 27? 27. So we'll have a pointer to the first element. If the, the current one is picked, we move that pointer. So let's say we pick 3, which was our first, our next, our pointer in this array will be 43. But our pointer on the first is still 27, so we'll compare 43 with 27. So let's take a look at on how this is implemented. Uh, I already have implemented it here, but I want to show you guys step by step. So what we're going to do is to first create the function. So it's going to be function, function, merge sort. Well, you can run this on VS Code. I'm using this uh, online code editor, editor just for ease of use. So the first thing that we said is to check, remember from the picture, that once the array is one or smaller than one, we return. That's our base case. Always that you solve a recursive problem, always think about the base case. So what is the simplest scenario? And the answer is based on that. So once you understand the basic scenario, building the recursive call is easier. So our basic scenario is if the length of our array is smaller than one, we simply return the array, right? So that's when we, that's the case here where, where we reach 38, 27, 43, so on and so forth. Sounds good. Then we need, that's where the recursion happens. We're going to split. So the way we're going to split, first we need to find out what is the middle of the array. So the, the, the one way we can do this is by doing, uh, so we get the length of the array and we divide it by two. However, this might be a decimal, a decimal number. In the case of the picture that I showed you guys, uh, we have seven as the length. If we divide this by two, it's gonna give, you, give us 3.5, but 3.5 is not a good index. We can't index into an array with a decimal number. That's why we need to, to, to floor it. So floor is basically, we're taking out the decimal point and uh, uh, rounding it to the nearest, to the, the, the integer below it. So it's going to become a three. And that will be the way we're going to split the array. So the left half of the array will be, uh, will be from zero up to the middle. And then the right will be from the beginning to the end. We don't need to say like length, um, like we don't need to specify. Using slice in JavaScript, it, it assumes that if you just leave one parameter, it's going to take from that parameter to the end. You can look at the documentation of slice to better understand this, but basically it will take the right half. So at this point, we're making a recursive call to the left and to the right. So it's going to do uh, basically the mechanism that for splitting is not done yet, but we've already found the midpoint. So now we need to actually do the splitting, right? And to do that is where we do the recursive call. We call merge sort with the left half and we do the merge sort with the right half. If you're watching this video and you're extremely confused about how recursion works, this is not the best problem to start with because it's really hard to understand recursion with a, a, a function that does multiple recursive calls like this one. So I 